Three times in the last few weeks, people, patient, colleague, and my wife, have told me stories about how out of control the price of EpiPens is. In the last few weeks, you've likely read many articles detailing how expensive the devices have become in recent years. All tell the tale of how much even basic healthcare can cost in the United States. But by digging a bit further, the story of EpiPens can also explain so much of what's wrong with our healthcare system in general. That's the topic of this week's healthcare triage. <laughs> When people think of allergies to drugs, food, or a bee sting, they often think of a rash. And in fact, that's how many allergic reactions develop and proceed. Most can be treated with diphenhydramine or Benadryl and careful observation. But some are more serious. Between 1 and 2% of people can develop what's known as anaphylaxis, when the airways you need to breathe swell and close. Luckily, there's a simple treatment for such reactions. Epinephrine, or adrenaline, is a hormone naturally produced by your adrenal glands. It's part of your fight or flight response, and it causes your heart to beat faster, your blood vessels to constrict, your pupils to dilate, and most important here, your airways to open. Epinephrine is very, very cheap. Even in the developing world, it costs less than a dollar per milliliter, and there's less than a third of that in an EpiPen. But to save a life, epinephrine must be delivered quickly, and in the proper amounts. People suffering allergic reactions often can't do it themselves. Drawing the drug into a syringe and then administering it to someone else requires training and precision that most people lack. For that, there's the EpiPen. What makes this auto-injection device so special is not the drug, but the ease with which it automatically administers the correct dose without delay. The instructions are right in the side, and even if you don't read them, it's pretty easy to figure out. Pull off the safety cap, line it up against the thigh, swing and push. Boom, epinephrine delivered. The EpiPen isn't new. It's been in use since 1977. Research and development costs were recouped long ago. Nine years ago, it was bought by the pharmaceutical company Mylan, which then began to sell the device. When Mylan bought it, EpiPens cost about $57 each. Few competitors existed though, and for various reasons, that has remained the case. The device actually worked and saved lives. People needed it. Mylan raised the price. It also began to raise awareness. Unfortunately, epinephrine is inherently unstable. Research shows that it degrades pretty quickly over time, and it's recommended that EpiPens be replaced every year. When my friends ask me if they can take an expired over-the-counter medication like acetaminophen or ibuprofen, I shrug and usually nod. If they don't get a full dose, it's usually not that big a deal. But epinephrine is no joke. People in anaphylaxis need a full dose every time. They therefore need to replace all their EpiPens every year, again and again. Kids need them in many places. They need them at home. They need them at school. They need them at camp. They may even need to stash a few at grandma's house. So people often need to buy quite a few. More revenue for Mylan. And it raised the price again. Then in 2010, federal guidelines changed to recommend that two EpiPens be sold in a package instead of one. Studies showed that about 10% of children who received epinephrine from an EpiPen needed more than one dose. Better to be safe than sorry. Additionally, the Food and Drug Administration changed its recommendations to allow for the prescription of EpiPens for prevention for at-risk patients, not just for those with confirmed allergies. Mylan stopped selling individual EpiPens and began to sell only twin packs. It also raised the price again. In 2013, the government went further. It passed a law that gave funding preferences for asthma treatment grants to states that maintained an emergency supply of EpiPens. As the near sole supplier of the devices, Mylan stood to make even more money. That year, Mylan raised the price again. Of course, competition would bring the price down, but it's very hard to bring such a device to market. In 2012, the AdrenaClick and Twinject were discontinued. In 2013, Sanofi began to sell AviQ devices, which even gave audio instructions to walk people through their use. Unfortunately, they were found to give potentially improper doses and were pulled from the shelves about a year ago. Teva had hoped to offer a generic version of the EpiPen, but concerns from the FDA sent it back to the drawing board until at least next year. Adamus hoped to offer pre-filled syringes, which would still be harder to use than EpiPens, but it was told by the FDA that much more data would be needed before such a product could be sold. These setbacks, all in the last year, have once again left Mylan with a veritable run of the market. It raised the price of EpiPens again. As of this May, they cost more than $600 a pack. Since 2004, after adjusting for inflation, the price of EpiPens have risen more than 450%. An alternative still exists. 
The Adrena Click, while still not cheap, is back and less expensive than the EpiPen. Some think it's harder to use though. It's not on the accepted list for many health insurance plans. More important, few physicians think of it. Because of that, they write prescriptions for EpiPens. And since the Adrena Click is not a generic version of the EpiPen, pharmacists can't substitute one for the other. A prescription for an EpiPen must be filled with an EpiPen regardless of what consumers might want. Some people argue that we could still just use syringes and epinephrine for far less money. Sure, they'd expire every few months. Sure, they'd be harder to use and likelier to break. Sure, they'd require training, be hard for the uninitiated to use in an emergency, and be more likely to be administered with an incorrect dose. Nonetheless, you could argue that they're an alternative when the Cadillac EpiPens are financially out of reach. But these are unsatisfactory arguments. Epinephrine is not an elective medication. It doesn't last, so people need to purchase the drug repeatedly. There's little competition, but there are huge hurdles to enter the market, so a company can raise the price again and again with little pushback. The government encourages the product's use, but makes no effort to control its cost. Insurance coverage shields some from the expense, allowing higher prices, but leaves those most at risk, most exposed to extreme out-of-pocket outlays. The poor are the most likely to consider going without because they can't afford it. EpiPens are a perfect example of a healthcare nightmare. They're also just a typical example of the dysfunction of the American healthcare system. And since we taped this, there have been updates in the saga. We'll cover them on Friday's episode of Healthcare Triage News. Healthcare Triage is supported in part by viewers like you through Patreon.com, a service that allows you to support the show through a monthly donation. We'd especially like to thank our research associate, Joe Sevitz, and our Surgeon Admiral, Sam. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Sam. More information can be found at patreon.com slash healthcare triage.